you are presenting yourself to Satan. But God be thanked, verse 17, but, by, but God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. I like that word. Were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became servants of righteousness. I speak the manner of men, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Sarx. S A R X. That remember it says the word became flesh. S A R X. This word here. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members servants to uncleanness, and most of you know what I'm talking about, because, you know, I, I know, I should speak for myself. And to iniquity, unto, iniqu unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness, unto holiness. Amen. For when ye were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there we go again where Jesus says, you can do nothing without me. That should be our mantra, our, our, our sign on our, on our, on our door, on, in the frontlets of our brain. We can do... I can do nothing without you. I mean, that's just... To be a Christian, to me, would be... It's how I want to think. I can do nothing without you. And when I try to take over the drivers and get in the driver's seat, I realize that that, that, that saying is true because most of the time, I should say about 99.9% of the time, I crash. <laughs> It does not come out in my favor. Okay, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. I'm sorry, verse 1. Romans chapter 8. Now it gets a little heavier here. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That word flesh is the same. It says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now that word flesh, S-A-R-X, is my flesh without Jesus. I can walk, I will, if, I'm, if I'm without Jesus, and He tells me, you can do nothing without me. If I have Jesus... Am I not walking in the Spirit? What Jesus has done for the human race is, is incredible. People don't like to hear what I'm about to say. And I, and I got uh, reams of... of uh, there's many verses in Scripture that back, uh, in the Spirit of Prophecy that back me up. Before I finish... In uh, Romans chapter 8, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 15. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points 
tempted like as we are yet without sin. Tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let's go back to Romans chapter 8. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Now the law, and the, the kids in the Sabbath school did a beautiful job talking about the law. I should let them do it, but I'll, I'll try to do it. And Indira, she, 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 she beat me to the punch, and, it, and I'm using her information. The law is like a mirror. If you got dirt on your face, you, you look into the mirror, oh, oh, I can see the dirt on my face. Do you take the mirror and try to clean your face with the mirror? It's good, it's mirror. The law is, is like looking into the mirror. You take the Ten Commandment law, you look into the law, and you see the reflection of yourself, and you see that you fall short. For the law could not, let's see, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, the law couldn't fix me like I couldn't wash my face with, with the mirror. The law can't wash me either. The law can't save me. He says, for what the law, this is verse 3, for what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Jesus could not condemn what He did not have. Jesus could not condemn what He did not have. Remember what I read in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15? How could Jesus be tempted like me if He wasn't like me? That's a pretty serious accusation there. How could Jesus be tempted like me if He wasn't me? Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. Without me, you can do nothing. But after the Spirit. We are in, if we have Jesus, we are walking in the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 says, and I'll read it. And I struggle with this with this with this for many years. And I must say that the struggle is not over, but it does get easier. This I say then. I want to read verse 17 first. There's something about the Hebrew writings that they kind of write verses in reverse sometimes. <coughs> And you'll see what I'm talking about. Verse 17 says, For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So let me ask you this question. If Jesus... The Word became flesh. It says, uh, what, did Jesus walk in the Spirit? Let me ask you that. 24-7? Yes. He never not walked in the Spirit. He never walked in the flesh, even though He had flesh. Uh, Galatians 4, 4, it says He was made of a woman. He was born of a woman. Jesus... Father was the Holy Spirit, but his mother was Mary. 
he, he shared, and it says the Word was made flesh, sarks. Uh, man, I'm getting deep. I want to turn to another verse, but I'm running out of room here. Let me open my Bible. Okay, let's go to... Uh, I don't want to lose my place. Let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 4. This is deep. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. When somebody comes to you and says something, do we just say, I don't believe that? What, it's, what this is saying is we should test the Spirit. What do we test the spirits by? Word. Word. I'm reading from the New King James. It says, Test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Does it say that all, that all the prophets are false? It says many false prophets have gone into the world. In verse 2, here it is. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every flesh that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. The Word became flesh. If we have a problem with, with that, we have a problem with God. Because God is telling us the Word became flesh. And if, and if Jesus has to be tempted like I am tempted, and let's not forget who we're talking about. We're talking about God. God, I believe He can do anything He wants to. He can take His divinity and hang it on a hook and not use it. If He used His divinity one time while He was here, and He says in Revelation 3.21, Revelation 3.21 says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, even if as I have also overcame. Jesus is telling me that if I overcome the way He overcame, how did Jesus overcome? Amen. Jesus allowed Himself to be led by the Spirit. And, it, and, and if you go to uh, Luke chapter 4, in verse 1, it said He was led by the Spirit into the desert. And after, he, after the temptation was over, it said He was led by the Spirit. Jesus was always led by the Spirit. Jesus is telling us, He's giving us the clue or the answer he was led by the Spirit. We just read, let's go back to our, 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 our original text. Well, I've got to finish uh, Galatians chapter 5. It says, verse 18, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idleness. And this just makes you feel dirty just reading all these things. But I'm going, to, I'm going down to the end. Revelings and such like. I'm in verse 21. Of the which I can tell you before I have also told you in the past that they which do such things do not inherit the kingdom of God. Hatred, variance, I'm going, to, I'm going to go back to a couple of them. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness. Uh, and back to verse 16, it says, This I say to you, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now let's go up to verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified 
the flesh with the affections and lusts. As Paul says, I die daily. Was this before he died or after he died? It was before he died. <laughs> of course, duh, he wrote it. He says, I die daily. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be deserious of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Okay, let's go back to uh, Romans chapter 8. Okay, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For the carnal, carnally minded is death. Carnally minded, that would be walking in the flesh, wouldn't it? Yes. I mean, after reading all those heinous things, the fruits of darkness, it says, because the carnal mind is is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh, if you're walking in the flesh, you cannot please God. But ye are, he says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. Did you hear that? It said quicken your immortal bodies? No, it says quicken your mortal bodies. So this is before translation. Yes. Quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. I mean, I believe that when we say examine yourself before the Lord, that is basically what you're doing. Examine yourself before the Lord. Do you have a fleshly problem? Then if you're examining yourself before the Lord, you're going to know that i got a problem here. Is God going to, at, at the end of time when He comes back, say, oh, it's okay. You'll, you'll be okay at glorification. When you're glorified, you won't sin anymore. Oh, the angel of God left heaven. They were holy. Well, they're not holy anymore. They were in glory. When we get to heaven... Sin cannot be with us. God says that sin will never raise its ugly head again. And just because we're glorified beings doesn't mean that we're not going to sin. I mean, look at Adam and Eve who, who were perfect. Sinless beings sinned. When we get to heaven in our glorified bodies, we're going to look back and we're going to see how terrible this great sin experiment was. And we will voluntarily not sin. We will not be made not to sin. Our minds won't be tweaked. The Day of Atonement, the last thing they were to do and the Day of Atonement in the Old Testament, what was the last thing they were supposed to do? Put sin away. That will be the last thing that leaves the sanctuary. Oh, Jesus will be the last thing that leaves the sanctuary. Our sins are in the sanctuary. They will be put away. Anyway, we won't go deep, deep into that. You have to do your own studies to, to understand the things that I'm talking about. I, I can stand up here and talk about them. I, I, I know a lot, but for me to give it to you... It, these things have to be caught, not taught. I don't know if you understand that, but anyway, read, 
I'm, I'm going to move on. It says, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you shall, if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye receive the spirit of adoption, which we cry, Abba, Father. And I, I, I went and I read about this thing, Abba, Father, and I, I don't know as I agree 100%. On it, but I love the way that Abba Father is a, is a is like an endearment, and people used to cringe when my buddy would be up here and he would say he would be on his knees praying and he would say thank you Daddy. God is everything to us. There's also a reverence, also, and people felt like that calling God Daddy was Daddy was kind of irreverent. But if you see a little child running to his dad, he's running up, he's going, Daddy, Daddy. That's what it means. Will I want to sit in God's lap one day? Yes, I do. And, and call him Daddy. I don't know if I'll ever be able to, but what's wrong with that? God loves us more than we know. Okay, we're going. We're, we're moving on, and we're going to uh, verse twenty-nine. And I love this verse. It says, "For whom did for, for whom he did foreknew, he also predestinated." And I'm not talking about pre. I, I believe that the whole human race was predestinated to go to heaven, Amen. not just certain people. That's, that, I'm a predestination guy. Yeah, everybody was predestination predestinated to be in heaven. The, the lake of fire was made for the devil and his angels. It's a terrible thing to think about. I'm trying to rectify it up here, but I just can't. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. That verse, if you unpack it, that word firstborn is prototokos. We get our word prototype from prototokos. If you look at it, it's Jesus is the great prototype. He's the firstborn from the dead. Every one that comes behind him is a prototype of Jesus Christ. Uh, he, they're, they're a copy of the prototype. <laughs> Thank you, Deborah. I got that. <laughs> but Jesus is the prototype, the firstborn. The second one is like him. The third one is like him. The fourth one is like him. We're not going to be all just alike, but we're all going to be In the image of Christ. I, I, I can't think of a, anything better. And I think I ran out of words. Um, you know, I want to say something. It says in John chapter 3, chapter 3, he that believeth on him is not condemned. Verse 21, But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that are wrought in God. Oh, I'm trying to think how to say this. Y'all pray for me.
Maybe while we're singing the song, it'll come to me. Let's, uh, let's close with, with the song. stand for closing him is going to be him number 530 it is well with my soul said or did. We don't know his thoughts. We know nothing else about the man except he said, remember me. I believe the man had a change of heart. Of course. 
because Jesus told him, you're going to be with me in heaven. I believe that that change of heart is what we each need. He saw Jesus for who He was. He could see Jesus was hanging on the cross, dying as a man, dying the death that we...